Arangatera ma tēnā koutou katoa. Welcome to day two of our conference. Ladies and gentlemen, successful nations need successful communities, and communities cannot be successful without effective local governments. It is our councils that ensure communities have the local infrastructure, services and leadership without which such districts, cities and regions cannot prosper. I appreciate that everybody in this room will know, will know this intimately, yet we need to keep reminding ourselves and all of New Zealand and their people of the important role our sector plays and why it is crucial that we play that role well. If we are to govern our communities successfully, we as elected members, managers and officials need to be at the absolute top of our game and be supported in doing so by our central government colleagues. Councils own assets in the, in the tune to the tune of around $110 billion and we employ 30,000 staff. If we fail to perform, our communities and the nation as a whole receive less value than they should from what they invest. If we are to perform well, we need to know, as a former colleague once told me, that we are doing the right things and doing them right. And it is more important than ever that we are that Sorry, it is more important than ever as we are facing environmental, demographic and economic challenges that will seriously test us and how we operate. While councils have been gathering com governing communities for more than 150 years, in my view we have now come to a turning point. National expectations are forcing us to increase service delivery level standards. Extreme weather events and their devastating financial and social costs are now more common and, according to the expert, are likely to become more frequent. We are on the cusp of a demographic and social changes that will result in many councils having both fewer and older citizens while others grow more slowly. And if I pause there for a minute, the funding review shows that almost half of the councils in New Zealand will lose population in the next 30 years. Dwell on that. Dwell on what it means for your community, for the infrastructure, for the investments decisions, for the levels of service. If we are to address these challenges and provide our communities with the opportunity to flourish, we need to ensure we are making, them, making effective and efficient use of the tools that we have at our disposal. However, what we are realising is that the framework of policy tools available to councils was designed to meet the challenges of the 20th century. This framework is simply not sufficient to meet the challenges we face today or in the future. Instead, our, our sector now requires a legislative framework that provides the policy tools and levers to allow us to respond flexibly, innovatively and without the restriction of unnecessary rules and regulations. It is in this total picture context that Local Government New Zealand launched its review of local government funding last year. These reviews are not new. Over the past 60 years, there has been a review undertaken on average every seven years. As you will all know, in almost all of those cases, findings were ignored by the governments of the day. This review, however, delegates, ladies and gentlemen, is different. It has been undertaken by us, by the local government sector itself, with input and support of key stakeholders and the focus is not only on funding. Our focus is on the ability of how councils can contribute to more successful and resilient communities. Funding plays a part, 
but so does better performance and a smart use of existing powers and resources. Despite that, we can't avoid looking at funding either. Before talking about the results of the review, I'd like to thank the members of the Working Party who put aside their valuable time to steer us through the process, and Sapare, who did a significant amount of legwork. The discussion paper which came out earlier this year drew a great response from many of you, and I thank you. It drew a good response from business, stakeholders, and the community as well. Today, I am pleased to release Local Government New Zealand's Manifesto for Change. What our 60 or so submitters told us, based on our views and best practice, made perfect sense. Firstly and foremost, we need an effective partnership with central government around shared goals and strategies. That was why I was so keen on Sunday to have a joined up level of thinking with central government. It's taken a long time, but I think we're pretty much there. We should find strong incentives for both arms of government to perform work together and allow, allow pragmatic testing of new funding ideas. There should be no more costly surprises to local government, for local government. I'm pleased to report that our shared priorities with central government recognise local government as a driver of strong local economies and communities for national prosperity. There are examples in housing and roading where development goals are being shared, although funding remains challenging, a challenging area as we address these two things. Secondly, as well as a partnership with government, feedback from the funding review discussion paper promoted the private sector and our communities as formative partners. We need to find new ways to share incentivise and achieve common goals. With these partners, local government should be open to innovation in service delivery, funding and financing. We should operate to the highest standards of fiscal discipline. I mentioned innovation and funding. Many of you mentioned in your submissions that local government responds to different challenges. While property rates are the cornerstone, other revenue sources can be employed for communities to meet needs and opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what New Zealand communities want from local government and especially from a sustainable and appropriate local government funding regime. To say yes to economic and community growth, we need, to better, we need a better funding environment. We need to create partnerships based on strong goals and shared goals. We need to incentivise communities, business and central government to help us. And we need to develop and trial good ideas and funding options. And yes, we may need to take the odd risk. We need a plan. Local Government New Zealand is advocating for a 10 key proposals in its plan, largely derived from the submissions it received on the funding review. Let me run through some of the major proposals. We propose that an agreed priority on action should advance special zones for growth to test new ideas and drive economic prosperity. In other countries, they have free trade zones. We are considering how we might test special zones which will help and support growth. A policy can be test run in a location or region without natural, national consequences. From this test, we want to make it easy for councils and central government to say yes to great growth ideas. Secondly, we, when new centrally imposed costs are considered, a cost-benefit analysis and agreed cost-sharing arrangement with central government should be mandatory. 
We are not going to tolerate unfounded mandates into the future. This ensures both local and central government meet a share in meeting standards which benefit the nation as a whole without undue costs falling onto communities. Thirdly, looking at rating specifically, Local Government New Zealand is proposing that mandatory rating exemptions should be removed. At present, legislative prescri legislation prescribes certain organisations that are exempt from rates. We believe that all beneficiaries of council infrastructure and services should pay their fair share and exemptions should be responsibilities of councils and their communities. Fourthly, on the rates rebate scheme, the process should be simplified to increase uptake. Our understanding is that only around 50% of people that are eligible are actually receiving that at this point. The application and administration of rates rebate should encourage low income households to apply for the readily available relief. Five, turning to general funding, local authorities are regularly faced with limited resources and making tough choices between affordability and service provision. LGNZ will look at best practice guidance to assist councils in making decisions on trade-offs about whether to fund services from taxes such as rates or from prices such as users pays. Nobody needs to reinvent the wheel. There is best practice in the sector and if I've got a criticism, one of it is that we don't share enough of it. Number six, tools such as um, road user charges should be enhanced and used. Local Government New Zealand is proposing that road user charge and fuel taxes should be allowed as a funding source where it's economically efficient. And many of you would previously know we had regional fuel taxes and other such things. But population growth and development can place real pressure on council infrastructure. A broader funding pool as well as new funding tools is required to supplement traditional funding sources. Again, this is in the interests of local and national interests. Point seven, as a general principle, councils should be able to retain a share of any value uplift arising from additional economic activity to relating to a local intervention or investment. What we mean by that is if in fact a local investment or decision choice is made in a local community, and it generates a very profitable business and there is extra tax generated, you can mount an argument that that local community should benefit from that investment. Similarly, local authorities, point eight, should receive a proportion of mineral royalties attributed to local activities. Now that's something that New Zealand First has picked up on but in our view, retaining a share from a local resource through royalties helps smooth out ongoing maintenance of infrastructure through booms and bust cycles. Point nine, the same principle applies to levying specific charges and taxes on visitors. And I've been asked about this this morning on the radio already, bed taxes, we're not calling it that. We're simply saying, what is a proposal that equitably reflects um, the cost to a local community of visitors and how can that be uh, given back to that local authority to provide the infrastructure. Some communities in New Zealand make considerable economic contributions to the country through providing tourism services and infrastructure. That is a cost often met by those residents. The, re the benefits of such should also be shared with the residents. Finally, growing communities must have the flexibility to ensure continued economic development. They should be, this should be achieved without unfairly burdening existing residents. LGNZ believes that the decision to limit the range of community amenities funded through development contributions should be reconsidered. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, this is a manifesto for fit-for-purpose funding. 
These proposals make it easier for councils to work with partners, to share ideas and goals, to be incentivised to say yes to local and national growth. When it first came out, the reaction from the Crown was, you want more money, there is no more money. This paper is actually not about that. It is a blend of saying, making sure we do things as effectively and as, efficient, as efficiently as we can as a sector for our communities. It's about saying that rating is a cornerstone funding tool, but importantly, it's about saying that the future makeup of New Zealand will change. And property-based taxation may not be a fit-for-purpose model in the next 10, 20 or 30 years, and we need to have a grown-up conversation with our communities, with all of you, with the government, to find a fit-for-purpose model. We look forward to working with central government. Importantly, we look forward to working with business and its interests and with communities to implement these proposals. In my mind, what we're talking about is fairness and equity and having a fit-for-purpose funding model. All these dovetail with our drive to improve local government performance and reputation. This is a start of a pretty big conversation. I don't want to be responsible for another jaw jam of paper that sits in somebody's office that never gets read. This is a live, active document, a live, active discussion, challenging that it may be at times, but it's how we see the future of funding of local government and our communities. This is the start of the conversation, as I've said, by this time next year, we are confident that considerable progress will have been made to, an access, to access an expanded range of funding to meet the needs of our times and for those to come. Ladies and gentlemen, I formally launch the Local Government New Zealand Funding Review, our 10-point plan, incentivising economic growth and strong local communities. There are copies at the back. Please read and enjoy. Thank you very much.